Good morning, St. John's. Good morning, happy Sunday. It's a little breezy out here. <laughs> it's a little breezy out here. We came down to Kim Beach to get away from the hot house a little bit. Now that it's been too hot, because we do have air conditioning, but just to be stuck inside day after day, this is really beautiful to be out here with the breeze and the lake view. We are really enjoying being out. Looking forward to uh, cautiously optimistic about the start of stage three. <laughs> Hoping the pandemic is behind us. Yes. Hope you enjoy the service. Have yourself an awesome day.
We are continuing our series on finding hope. Today, it's about finding hope in injustice. Specifically, we consider how to find hope when we experience injustice by our fellow human beings. And we start with this. Injustice is a huge challenge, whether it happens to ourself or we see it happening to others. Injustice troubles our soul. We hear this from the first cry of a little child saying, it's not fair. There are lots of ways we seek to resolve the troubling nature of injustice. We can take on the injustice with a sense of self-righteousness. This has led to movements that have found hope in eliminating or reducing a particular injustice, like Mothers Against Drunk Driving. It can also lead to our own acts of injustice which we too easily justify with, they started it. Instead of taking on the injustice, we can seek to reduce the troubling nature of it by dismissing what happened as an injustice. And instead seeing it as something that we or others deserve. This can lead to people who are abused saying, it was my own fault. And to a nation that is starving, hearing the world say, they had it coming to them. And in terms of faith, we can try to resolve the troubling nature of injustice by dismissing any thought of finding hope for this life from God. This can lead to leading our lives as if nothing we do in this world really matters. And it can lead to us giving up any thought that God even exists. So today, we seek to find hope in injustice with a principle, a promise, and wisdom from the Bible. We begin with the principle. The biblical principle for finding hope in injustice is finding hope in the injustice of the suffering, trial, and crucifixion of Jesus. Through the injustice of the cross of Jesus, we can know that the injustice we or others are experiencing is not God's punishment. In fact, in the injustice Jesus went through, God is saying to all who are experiencing injustice, I am with you. I get it. I see you. I care. And for all who seek to point out some kind of fault in you or in others that are experiencing the injustice, we find hope in the injustice of Jesus willing to pay the price that justice demands for whatever your failings or mine or theirs are. As Isaiah 53, 5 says, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. 
So we begin in the name of the God of justice that Jesus has made known. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the principle of God's love and forgiveness offered to all in the cross of Christ. children. Oh, hi, Manzo. Well, that sounds like quite a story. What happened? Oh, too many gummies. Oh, I ate a whole bag of them and then I got sick. You ate too many gummies, eh? Where'd you get them all from? My mummy and daddy. Your mummy and daddy gave you a whole bag of gummies to eat? Well, I wanted them when I was at the grocery store with them yesterday. I, I kind of made a fuss and I begged and, oh, I like them so much. Well, they bought a bag for me, but I was only to have a couple for myself and to share the rest. So then what happened? Well, I meant to share and I thought I'd only have a couple, but then in the back seat of the car on the way home, I ate one and then another. <gasps> And then another. I ate so many, I got sick. Oh boy, oh boy. What then? Well, Mummy and Daddy took me home and they put me to bed. It was while I was laying there in the dark with a tummy ache, I realized they didn't scold me or anything. They just loved me and did what was best for me. It was there I realized they gave me what I wanted and loved me enough to let me figure it out on my own. Wanting was one thing, but not such a good thing that I put my faith in my own understanding. What I did with it was a lesson I won't soon forget. I'm feeling better now, but my tummy still aches some. Mm, sorry you have a tummy ache, Manzo. It sounds like justice, though. Justice? What do you mean? Well, justice has to do with what's right. It seems like you got the right consequences for your actions. <laughs> you kind of got what you deserved, eh? Those just consequences can be hard, but they can help us learn from our mistakes. Oh, I've sure learned my lesson. Eating a whole bag of gummies is not good for me. And now I don't have any to share with my friends. Oh, hey, buddy. It's good that you're learning. Your parents must love you a lot to let you learn your lesson this way. Next time you'll have lots left to share. You know, we don't always get what we deserve. We don't always get justice. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I remember once when I was a young cub, I wanted to play house. I knew my mummy kept special teacups in a cupboard. I climbed up to the cupboard and when I reached for one of those teacups, it fell and smashed on the ground. Oh no! Oh boy! I bet your mum was upset! Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes she was. Um, she told me she had received that teacup from her grandma a long time ago and she was really sad it was gone. Oh no! What happened then? Well, it would have been justice if she had told me that I was grounded forever. And I was going to have to do housework for the rest of my childhood to pay for that cup. But really, I never could have paid for that cup. It was irreplaceable. A gift from her grandma. You know what happened instead? No. What? Mama said she forgave me. I told her I was sorry. She showed me that grace rules. So I would never do it again. And it was true. My mama's love and forgiveness made me want even more to do what's right. Wow. Even more than if you had got what you deserved. Oh, yeah. That makes me think about someone else who didn't get what he deserved. You know who I mean? Who's that? Well, Jesus. Oh. He never did anything wrong, and yet people treated him horribly. Yeah. 
He actually allowed people to wit and beat him and crucified. He didn't deserve any of that. No, he didn't. Why would he let them do that to him? That's not justice. You're right, Manzo. Not at first sight. He did it because of his love for his Heavenly Father and for you and me, trusting in him that we can be forgiven. If we were given justice, we'd never be able to work hard enough to pay for our sins. Jesus took all our sins on himself. He didn't deserve it, but he loved us that we might die to sin and have faith in the goodness of God. Wow, Judah, because of his love, I want to love him right back with all of my heart and trust him even when the lessons are hard. Yeah, me too, little buddy, <laughs> me too. Good morning. The first reading is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? The second reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 14. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. May God open our hearts to the wisdom of his word.
principle for finding hope in injustice is the cross of Jesus. And in the gospel reading, we hear a promise from the Bible for finding hope in injustice. It's a promise from Jesus. Jesus promises us that justice matters to God and that God will see that justice is done. Jesus tells us this with a story that encourages us never to give up on this idea, never to lose faith in God. Rather, Jesus says with this story he tells us, for as long as we are troubled by injustice, we are to keep praying to God about it. Keep talking to God about it. Keep listening to God about it. Keep trusting that God cares about justice and will see that justice is done. Jesus puts it this way, will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily, nevertheless. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Jesus backs up this teaching about the justice of God with his life, dying on the cross as the Son of Man to take and pay the price for the consequence of all injustice, including the injustices that you and me are guilty of. And God backs up Jesus saying this with Jesus rising from the dead three days after his death, demonstrating God's swiftness in bringing justice to his elect. And Jesus encourages us to faithfulness 
for finding hope in injustice in God. With this funny story of this powerful judge who could do whatever he wanted. And what this powerful, do whatever he wanted to do, judge wanted was not to be bothered with the petty demands of this persistent widow. This persistent widow who reminds us of how we can feel about God when God does not seem to be answering our cries for justice. And then this story Jesus tells takes a funny turn. And this powerful, do whatever he wants judge says to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she'll not beat me down by her continued coming. <laughs> it's a ridiculous picture. This powerful, do whatever he wants judge getting beaten down by the persistence of this widow. I can see Jesus smiling as he says this, encouraging his disciples, encouraging you and me that as persistent as this widow is in prayer, God is more persistent in seeking justice because God is a God of grace and mercy and love and justice and Jesus knows his father and knows this is true. And Jesus is encouraging us to see, to believe that it's ridiculous to think that God does not care about justice for every one of his children. To make sure we get the point that our faith for God's justice depends on his grace, not our persistence. Luke follows this story with the story of the prayers of the self-righteous Pharisee and the humble tax collector. So we can find hope in the face of injustice, in the promise of the grace and the justice of God we know in Jesus. And I invite you to join me in singing a song of this faith, immortal, invisible, God only wise.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, how about this? I'm recording this on Wednesday. It's, it's cooling off, eh? Only 44.3. Yikes! Let's put the creed today, uh, just a little bit of an explanation to what you're going to see. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, visiting my sisters and my mom. I hadn't been there for quite a few months, as many of us haven't been able to see friends and family. And had a really sweet time there, visiting her every morning that I was there. On Sunday morning, the day I was to leave, I went over to her place around 10 o'clock and walked into the room and she was crying on, on her bed and I didn't know what was going on and asked her and I guess she'd been treated a little bit harshly by the, some of the staff there and um, she's pretty sensitive so she was picking that up and she was just a bit sad about how things were going for her and and um, through the course of the morning we just talked about truth and lies and how she's seeing herself the things that she can control things she can't control and and um and we had a, came up with a pretty good list of the things that she can do and can't control and uh and she left that time feeling great and so did i um just toward the end though i was thinking about saint john's and what was happening that morning at saint john's and i said well mom why don't we do the creed together and so we what you're going to see now is kind of that morning and, and her expression our expression of faith in the Apostles' Creed. Okay. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. You know, that's, that's really good to have that in your memory, Frank. Because yeah, if somebody, I don't know what you believe, it's right there. You know, and and a person can read it, you know, can m memorize it, even if you forget how to say it. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I said it to me, and oh, did you? one day, and I said, you, you know, uh, Virgin Mary, <laughs> She's like, got the whole over. <laughs> so they learned something of it, you know. Yeah, that's right. And let's see if we can do the, uh, the other creed. Oh. I see. <laughs> I don't think we can do it. I haven't been studying. I haven't been studying. I'll do it as far as I can go. Okay. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and indeed in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. Who was conceived by the, the only begotten Son of God. <laughs> See that? That's the trouble. We know the other one. Uh -huh. So I, I go, go to the catechism. Well, it's the hymnal. And I kind of study it, and it's, it just doesn't stick. <laughs> but I'll have to pray the Lord sticks it. That's right. Pray the Lord sticks it. <laughs> That's good, Mom. Okay. Good morning. So I'm recording this on Canada Day. It's been on my mind quite a bit lately how we should recognize and commemorate Canada Day with our kids this year. We live in a beautiful place where we have so many opportunities. And while that's always been something that seems worthy of celebration, we still have a long way to go for our marginalized communities. Recognizing and acknowledging the atrocities that have happened is so important today and every day. The discovery of over a thousand children's graves recently, with so many more left to be discovered, is heartbreaking and enraging. I want to stand with our Indigenous brothers and sisters in their grief and their mourning. So I'd like to start with a moment of silence to remember and pray for all the children who never returned home, all the families destroyed, and all the survivors whose lives were irreparably damaged. And then I'll lead us in prayers.
Heavenly Father, I pray today for comfort for those who mourn and peace for those in turmoil. I ask that your healing presence be felt by the communities who are having their trauma brought to light right now. I pray as well for the residents of Lytton. I pray for safety for everyone who's been displaced and everyone who's responding to the fires in our province right now. Lord, I pray for rain. <clears throat> I also have a prayer of thanks, Lord, for all who are celebrating accomplishments right now, all of our graduates in our um, congregation. We know you were with those completing high school and college through this challenging year, and we know that you'll be with them while they move forward to new opportunities. And we just thank you for um, the, uh, the, the future that these people will have and the good that they'll do. All these things, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. It is good to find hope in injustice in the cross of Jesus and his promise that God will bring justice. But is it enough? I planned today's theme, Finding Hope in Injustice, on May 22nd. Five days later, on May 27th, CBC News reported a Canadian injustice that has gone worldwide. That day, the Tecumloops to Sequimpunk First Nations Band said that the remains of 215 children had been found on the grounds of the former Kamloops Indian Residential School. Since then, additional sites have been identified. Is it enough to simply say, find hope in the cross of Jesus and his promise that God will bring justice? Injustice troubles our soul. It disturbs our soul because human beings were made to be a reflection of God, just, true, caring. So when we see injustice in others and we don't dismiss it, we are moved to, to want to do something. But what? When we experience human beings being unjust to us, it is truly helpful to experience something good from a fellow human being. And often that starts with somebody actually listening to us. In the case of our indigenous brothers and sisters in Christ, brothers and sisters in humanity, finding hope in injustice could start with us listening to them with humbleness. If you're interested, I can send you a link to a June 6th message by the Reverend Dr. Ray Aldred, a Cree man from the Swan River Band, who was ordained in the Alliance Church and is the director of the Indigenous Studies Program at the Vancouver School of Theology. The idea of listening with humbleness comes from the Micah reading, which I had chosen actually back on May 22nd. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. There are many Bible passages that offer specific wisdom for specific situations, but for general wisdom from God, for finding hope in injustice, I find this really happy, helpful. Do justice. Don't just love the idea of getting it for yourself. Love kindness, love mercy, love steadfast love, not revenge. And seek to live here with 
humbleness as the child of God you are. Let's pray. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep us strong in faith in your grace, your presence in suffering, your promise of justice for all your children. Hear the cries of the indigenous peoples of Canada, the cries of others experiencing injustice in this world, and our own cries for justice, and help us to do the justice you have gifted us for doing and call us to do. Loving kindness, mercy, steadfast love, and living here with humbleness as your children. And may your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And let's go. In the wisdom and power of God in Christ crucified and risen, who has shown mercy, kindness, steadfast love for all, and done justice for all sin, humbly offering new and everlasting life in his love. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.